Right, so having completed section one, now we will move to the section two, uh, where the key focus will be to understand the uh, message of Quran and the focus will be on Tadabur. So this is a section which is not so much directly related to Surah Akhlas, but it just generally talks about the methods that we need to use before we approach the uh, Surah Akhlas. So this is more to do with the method that we will be using in section three, four, and five. Right, so the next question that we are going to go through is that Quran Majid encourages its readers to reflect on its meanings using which of the following phrases? And the correct answer could be more than one. So the first option is whether it uses the word to think or contemplate, or whether it uses the word to examine or to see, to observe, to take lessons, or does it use the words like people with intellect, referring to uh, 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 people who can take cognizance of different facts mentioned in the Quran, or lessons from those who have heart and could see. So of the, these three options, uh, which one you think is the correct? And the answer is all three of these. So these are the words that have been used in Quran to encourage us to reflect on its meanings. So if we use specifically the words, so yatafakkarun, they think, and the other uh, derivatives, yakilun, contemplation, yanzarun, examination, avalam jirao, did they not see, yupsirun, did they not observe, or, or observation, fa'biru, taking lessons, ibratun li ulil absar, lessons to those which have hard to see, ya ulil albab. So, a key message here is that Quran encourages its read readers to reflect as they go through uh, this divine book. All right, so now let's start by reviewing this question. To understand Quran Karim and to seek advice from it, you must have a qualification or a deep grasp of Arabic language or work around, um, under supervision of an esteemed scholar. You think, is this a true statement or a false statement? Well, the answer is, it is incorrect. The identified factors are useful, but these are not compulsory. Now, this is a sort of a misconception which prevails that uh, Quran Karim is not a book for an ordinary masses and it's only for people who have a qualification or who are esteemed scholars to understand. Um, where this is contrary uh, to the message which uh, Quran Karim gives us itself. So in Surah Al Kamar, uh, which is Surah 54, verse 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلزِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ Indeed, we have made the Quran easy for seeking advice, so is there anyone to heed the advice? Right? So even there's a lot of stories of non-Muslims reading uh, the Quran, understanding and reflecting on its verses and converting to Islam. And there are certain best practices on how can we reflect uh, uh, on the meanings of Quran and we will uh, study those best practices uh, later on in this presentation. Right next uh, we will like you to reflect on the name of the Quranic or an Arabic term which is used to reflect on the meanings of the verses of the Quran using comprehensive deep thinking in order to achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. So there is a one very specific term which we use for this purpose and this term is repeated time and again within Quran Majid. So can you reflect on this term and uh, uh, jot it down? So here I would like to bring to your attention this um, uh, verse from Surah Saad, the verse 29, where this word liyadabbaru or uh, meaning tadabbur is used. So this first read, Kitabun Anzal Nahu Ilaika Mubara Kulli Yadabbaru Ayatihi Wali Yatazakara Ulul Albab, which translates as this is a book, the Quran, which we have sent down to you, full of blessings that they may ponder over its verses, and that men of understanding may remember. So here you can see clearly that just reading and reciting the Quran or memorizing it without understanding its meaning is not good enough. There is a clear encouragement for us to understand, reflect and ponder and correspondingly take actions to improve ourselves and our society.
Now, this encouragement to do tadabbur uh, has been repeated time and again within Holy Quran. So, bringing your attention to Surah Muhammad, verse 24, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala yatadabbarun al Qur'ana am ala kulubin akfaluha. Then, do they not reflect upon the Quran or are there locks upon their heart? Right, so this is a metamorphical term used here that have their hearts hardened to a level that they cannot receive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and the advice for the right direction. So al Qaradawi talks about that the existence of the Quran had changed the soul, morals and characters as well as personalities of the Arab nations to an extent that they were able to build a civilization of knowledge and faith. And this change was only triggered because of their, first of all, uh, understanding and then they acted upon the teachings of the Quran. So if we want to uh, have desired positive impacts, we have to make our best effort to understand and act upon its uh, teachings. A very important message and there is a, a guidance given to us. So for instance, uh, in Surah Ali Imran, there is a, a dua which we should make uh, our daily practice, which is, talks about Rabbana la tuzih kulubana. Oh, uh, our Lord, let not our hearts deviate from the truth. Ba'da is hadaitana, after you have guided us. Wahablana min ladunka rahma, after you, uh, and grant us mercy from you. Inna ka antal wahab, truly you are the bestower. So we should uh, seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because without guidance from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, it will be uh, almost impossible. So in other words, encouraging us to do tadabbur uh, surah al-nisa verse 82 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says afala yatadabbarun al-qur'an walaw kana min indi ghayri llahi lawajadu fi ikhtilafan kaseera do they not then ponder about the quran had it been for someone other than allah they would have found in it great deal of discrepancy now, background to this verse is that in all times and ages, enemies of Islam has labeled all sorts of accusations, including Quran, Na'uzubillah, is a book authored by Muhammad. So in response, a challenge has been given to them. And this is that Quran is one of the most widely read and researched book ever in the human history. So if it had a human author, it would have a lot of discrepancies. So without doubt, Quran is a book which has not got any discrepancy. Another evidence for Quran Surah Al Muminun was 68 Afalam Yadabbar al Kaula. Have they not pondered over the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which has been sent down to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Right, so in a nutshell, uh, time and again, the need for reflections uh, have been emphasized at various places within Quran Majid. Right, so let's come to this next question, where the question is, for young people, the ultimate goal is to ensure they could read and recite Quran Kareem properly. They could ponder on the meaning of Quran Majid at a later stage in their life when they have acquired sufficient knowledge of Arabic and when their general knowledge has increased. Right. So this argument that, well, Arabic is not my mother tongue, so for a lot of Muslims, that is the case. So how can I understand it? So what I need to focus is essentially on just reading and recital in a proper uh, manner. And this is good enough for me to obtain the baraka uh, for, from the Quran. And uh, at a later stage, perhaps I would try to understand it. But for the time being, I can just focus on understanding Arabic. So do you think this sort of a thinking, is it true or would you think it is a false? So, if you had a chance to think, the correct answer is it is a complete misconception and nothing could be uh, uh, more uh, uh, um, incorrect. Now, there is a clear hadith uh, narrated by Abu Huraira, Zilla Talano, uh, from the devil's trick is to turn people away from Tadapur. So the devil wants us to stay away from understanding of Quran or pondering on the Quran because he knows that there is a link between Tadapur and the guidance. These two things are interconnected. So once you uh, reflect on the meanings of the Quran, this is where you get the guidance. So the easiest way is if you don't do the Tadapur, how will you get the uh, uh, guidance? 
So this is uh, an important thing that we need to uh, keep in mind. Previously, we went through the uh, verse Walakat al Quran al Zikr. We have made Quran easy for Hal Mim Muddakir. Uh, so is there anyone to take advice, which is uh, verse uh, 40 from uh, Surah Al-Kamar. So Quran has been made uh, very easy for us to understand. And in this time and age, we have got no excuse, right? We have got access to best translations in every single language. We have got access to tafsir. Uh, and even uh, learning Quranic Arabic is not difficult so that we could understand it in the language it was revealed. So not understanding the Quran is no longer an accepted uh, excuse. Right, so let's go through a small scenario. So the scenario is that in your Quran class, you read the following verse. And the verse here is from Surah Ahzab, number 71. And whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he has indeed achieved great achievement. Now, your friend argues that he or she has understood the meaning of the verse and has gone through the Surah Tafsir, which includes detailed meanings and background to revelation, and thus they have achieved the objectives of Tadabur, right? So the question here is that just by uh, going through the Tafsir and reading about the background to revelation, do you think the objectives of Tadabur has been achieved or not? So whether your answer is true, or false they do reflect on it the correct answer is false the tadabbur quran involves self-introspection so just by reading the meanings or background to the revelation or understanding the arabic uh, meanings of this verse the objectives of tadabbur will not be achieved now it's very important to understand clearly the difference between tafsir and tadabbur. Now in tafsir the key focus is on understanding the meanings of the Quran and it's usually a commentary by scholars and tadabbur is a very personal thing. It is a self-reflective journal or self-improvement uh, sort of a thing. So while well, looking at uh, this example where we were focusing on this verse azima, and whoever obeys Allah and his messengers وسلم, he has indeed achieved great achievement a verse from Surah Azab 71 so if uh, we are reading tafsir the focus will be on meanings what are, are the meanings of this uh, verse what is scholarly interpretation but if we are doing a tadabbur, that is a very personal dialogue. And here we will be asking a question, how is this verse relevant to me? So it is going to be a very personal sort of a, a issue. And you may ask questions like how this ayah relates to me, what it tells me about direction I need to take in my life. So for instance, this verse is talking about a great achievement. We want to be successful in life. So are we heading in the right direction uh, uh, of success or so? If we are reading tafsir, reading tafsir, the focus will be on looking into things like an interrelationship between this verse and the ones preceding it, or maybe the ones following it. What were the reasons for revelation? Now, uh, most of these surahs are very closely uh, related to the seerah of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, because Quran in the Kareem was revealed in context of Prophet Muhammad wasallam's life. So in some uh, 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 surahs, there are background reasons which explain uh, the circumstances. So perhaps uh, going through the tafsir, the focus may be on the reason for revelation or any explanation by the scholars who have written the tafsir or sometimes for difficult to understand verses, they uh, have a detailed explanations and examples. Um, okay, but in the tadabur aspect, you will be focusing more on the self-introspection Okay, uh, am I being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it's being mentioned in this verse? Do I live my life according to this ayah? So in tafsir, focus may be on uh, having a detailed comprehensive explanation as given by the scholars of this particular uh, ayah. Whereas in tadabur, the focus may be on action planning. Okay, so this is a verse. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in his book. So what is in it for me? How can I improve? What is my action planning? So I need to stop doing 
maybe this 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 aspect i need to uh, maybe set a dedicated time in my weekly calendar to make time for maybe whatever uh, you think is most appropriate to do following the advice you have obtained or following the aspects of my personality needs improvement one two three four so here we are going through a journey a personal journey of uh, determining the relevance uh, some self introspection and based on this some action planning to improve our uh, conduct in life right now so i would like to bring to your attention this verse 30 of surah al furqan and in this verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes waqala rasulu ya rabbi inna qaumi takhazu hazal quran mahjura and the messenger will say oh my lord my people had taken this Quran as deserted. Now, the job of the messenger was to deliver us the message of Rabb, our creator. And it's a job which our messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did it very well. So as the famous verse, al yawmu akmaltu lakum deenukum wa akmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa razitu lakum al-islam deena. Right? Now, it was left to us, the onus was uh, on the people so the question here is in your understanding what are different ways in which people could desert or leave the holy quran right so the question here is which category of people would be classed among those who will fulfill this category of hazal quran mahjura those who have deserted the quran so the first category is people who do not do any recitation so these are the people who have got no time to recite or listen to quran perhaps they are very busy with their life However, they have got uh, no time to understand the meaning, so they read or memorize the Quran, but do not make an effort to understand its meaning. They do not make an effort to read the tafsir or to understand the context in which those uh, uh, surahs were revealed. And the third is the category of people who uh, are not like A and B. They definitely do recite the Quran. They do understand it, but they do not act upon it. So perhaps they have this feeling that there is a divide between the theory and the practice. So Quran and reading Quran is just the theory. And in the uh, fact, they could just go about um, doing whatever they want. And category D is all of the above. So of these four choices, which one do you think uh, fulfills the uh, criteria? Now, I think uh, if we just quickly review the first category, they are not even bothered reciting or listening to the Quran. So they would definitely, uh, uh, in the literal sense, uh, fulfill the uh, criteria of uh, leaving the uh, Quran. The second option was people who do not bother understanding its uh, meaning. So on in the other place, it was mentioned in Quran that uh, the analogy of a donkey carrying a lot of books. So even though they recite, they could try to get some baraka but there is no genuine effort to understand what is inside the quran and what is the meaning right so they would perhaps be, be also be part of the people who would be classed as deserting the uh, quran and third category of people are quite dangerous people so there is a bit of a hypocrisy uh, in their conduct they understand it but they do not act upon it so this is a behavior which is often related to munafikat or you are outwardly a Muslim, but inside you follow a different code consciously or unconsciously. So the action is very important. So if you re recall uh, when Aisha Ta'ala was asked about the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she gave a very brief reply that her character is Quran. Right. So. Uh, this again uh, if you selected that it's a wrong option the correct option is all of the above category of people will be classed as read, uh, uh, those uh, who fall in this category of uh, uh, leaving or deserting the Quran so the key message that we learn from this is that uh, recitation on its own is just not enough we should make a genuine effort to take it to the level of understanding and once we have understood the message and once we have done enough tadabur, we should lead it to this uh, action. So just pro, uh, remember this three point framework, recite and then try to understand the meaning and then change your life accordingly.
So the need for us to develop a good understanding of Quran is also very clearly visible from this uh, verse from Surah al Juma, which is verse 62 to 65, where an example and analogy is given. Uh, and the translation reads, the likeness of those who were entrusted with the obligation of the Torah, that is to obey its commandments and to practice its laws, but who subsequently failed in those obligations, is as the likeness of a donkey, which carries huge burdens of books but understands nothing from them. How bad is the example of people who deny the ayahs, proofs, evidence, verses, signs, revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah guides not the people who are Zalimun, which include polytheists, wrongdoers, disbelievers. Now, in Quran, when there is a description of the people before us, it is not a storytelling. A very clear message is being made here that do not be uh, like those who carried a burden of book but understood nothing from it. So just a recall in the previous slide, we saw the importance of not only reciting the Quran, but also understanding it and then leading our life according to it. So another question here, while reading Quran, I can contemplate on which things from the list. So can we reflect on maybe wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, such as beautiful earth and the universe where you know, there is a mention of these things? Or can we reflect on my love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet, peace be upon him, and what actions can I take to earn Allah's prayer when we read the relevant uh, verses? Or uh, number C, which is my desire to succeed on the day of judgment and prevention from severe punishment of the day or the four choices, um, you know, all of these. So which one of these uh, four you think is the uh, right one? So uh, the correct answer is basically all of the above options uh, are things uh, which we can contemplate on. So I would like you to ponder on this question. We read lots of books, including fiction, non-fiction, curricular books. But what are your thoughts on how reading Quran Karim, which is a divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is different from reading any other ordinary book? So, so how it is different uh, in terms of our approach to it and in terms of the process that we use to obtain guidance from it? Right, so let's go through some uh, advice on how shall we read Quran Karim. And this advice is given by a very early uh, Muslim scholar, Abu Hamid Al Ghazali. And, and the advice is based to a large extent the uh, practices which were followed by Prophet Muhammad and his companions. So he says, if when you're reading, you have to assume that you are the one who is intended in every statement in the Quran. So you are the target audience. It's a personal dialogue from uh, a creator of the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you are the recipient. So read it with due diligence and with a lot of care. And this is uh, uh, an advice for you. Hence, if you hear a command or prohibition, you should assume that you are the one who is being commanded or prohibited. Right. So if you hear anything, try to understand what is the message and then you have to act upon it and uh, you have to reflect upon it, ponder upon it and try to do your best to adapt that whatever advice you have obtained into your life. If you hear a promise or a threat, you do the same. So there are the practices of uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would stop, and uh, when there, wherever there is a promise or a threat, he would uh, pray accordingly. And likewise, uh, similar practices of the companions. And if you hear the stories of the past and those of the prophets, you should realize that entertainment is not the objective, but rather it is for you to take lessons and to extract from its lines all what you need. So, for instance, in the previous verse, we were talking about a mention of uh, people of Torah who left um, uh, uh, their understanding of, of the Quran and were just carrying the load of it without understanding. So it is not just for our entertainment and the description of our previous people, but a very clear advice that we should not follow the same path. All right, so I would like to bring to your attention this uh, narration uh, from uh, Abdullah bin Abbas, 
Now, Abdullah bin Abbas, uh, is a, was a companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and from a very young age, he used to assist Prophet Muhammad sallallahu So, for instance, when Prophet Muhammad uh, was making wudu, he would bring water and do small chores uh, from him. So, uh, once Prophet Muhammad sallallahu hugged him and gave him a dua that, O oh Allah, teach um, uh, Abdullah uh, the knowledge of the book. So, uh, now when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu died, his age was 13 years. He was a young boy, but even at that young age, he was considered an authority on Quran. And uh, so his statement is considered a gold standard, a person who has been given uh, a dua that uh, he be uh, given the knowledge of the book and by Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. So he says, if I were to recite Surah Al-Baqarah with Tadabur, this would be more beloved to me than to recite the whole Quran without Tadabur. So if we put, visualize it, his focus is that even if you read a small section with understanding, that is much better than you read quite a lot without uh, understanding. And this is um, uh, very important. This is also reflected in the way uh, Abdullah bin Abbas spent his life. So the narrations suggest that uh, outside the house of Abdullah bin Abbas, there used to be a queue of people willing to learn Quran and its interpretations from him. So uh, many people say his house was like a university with people waiting. So one batch of uh, students would learn Quran from him. They would go away and then another group of students would join again. But there was one rule to en enter the house of Abdullah bin Abbas. And his rule was that uh, you, you have to just focus on Quran and interpretation while uh, you are in his house. And he was also uh, compiled a lot of ahadis as well. So I would like to bring to your attention one of the events uh, from the life of Ibn Abbas So once he heard that certain companion of Prophet وسلم, knew about a hadith which he was not aware of. So what he did was he went in the morning to uh, the companion's house. But his courtesy was that he didn't knock at his door. He was just waiting there uh, till the companion would come out. So he just waited there for hours and hours. Now, you know, uh, were there it's intense heat so people usually would come out late in the day and uh, uh, so he waited for hours and uh, when, when the companion came out that was the dialogue which took place the companion said oh cousin of the prophet what's the matter with you if you had sent for me i would have come to you what's the point you waiting outside my house for such a long time and uh, and to this uh, ibn abbas respond or he could have sent uh, one of the students as we saw his house was like a university so but he said uh, i am the one who should come to you for knowledge is sought it does not just come so it just clearly shows uh, the humility and uh, the attitude of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And later on, he asked about the hadith and learned from it and, and documented. So uh, I like this statement. And when we try to read the Quran, we should remember that knowledge is sought. It, it does not uh, just come. You have to do some effort to uh, get the knowledge. So what was the impact of reading of Quran? On the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Asma bint Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu says, whereupon hearing the recital of the Quran, the eyes of the companions were filled with tears and their bodies trembled. So they would understand it, they would ponder upon it, and it would have a very deep impact uh, uh, to the meanings of the Quran. And Abu Huraira radhiyallahu anhu uh, uh, narrates that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that a moment of contemplation is better than a year of worship. In Surah Anfal, verse 2, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا زُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَّتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The believers are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, feel a fear in their hearts. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ and when his verses, which is this Quran, are recited on to them, they, or the verses, increase their faith and they put their trust in their Lord alone.
In Surah Al-Hadid, verse 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Has not the time arrived for the believers that their hearts in all humility should engage in the remembrance of Allah and of the truth which has been revealed to them, and that they should not become like those who has, was given revelation of four time but long ages passed over them, and their hearts grew hard, for many among them are rebellious transgressors. So there are certain tips given by scholars on how shall we approach uh, our understanding of the Quran. So the first step in the process is that we need to have, first of all, uh, purify our intentions. So that means not only doing wudu and being clean, but also clean from the intentions. Our intention should be genuine uh, uh, and the one to obtain guidance from our creator to lead our life. Secondly, use a reliable translation if you do not understand Arabic. So if you, uh, uh, Quranic and Arabic is difficult for you to understand, there are uh, quite a few good uh, translations available in all the languages. So try to get a, a hands of, on a good translation. Never study a verse in isolation from other verses and hadiths on the topic. So uh, uh, you should not try to uh, uh, just look at only one single verse without appreciating the broader context so uh, try to uh, uh, see the big picture and also relevant explanations as given by uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu in his hadith now there are certain verses which require a bit more explanation and these explanations have come from our prophet and companions so there is certain precedence order and we prioritize the explanation of the uh, prophet and his companions so the earlier people have got uh, more uh, uh, importance in terms of the uh, their understanding than those who follow them and check if there is a reason for revelation and understand its relevance so uh, there are certain um, revelations which came in Mecca and a few in Medina and the Quran is very much tied to the seerah of uh, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam and uh, it relates to different events in his life and uh, so the meaning has to be understood in uh, relation to the connections with the seerah. Now all this clarify fiqh and aqidah verses with uh, scholars. So a lot of the Quranic verses are very simple to understand but there are few fiqh and aqidah verses where if you have got any doubts you could ask a, 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 a qualified scholar and uh, lastly familiarize yourself with the sciences of the quran which alumul quran for uh, developing a deeper appreciation so the next question that we will ponder on is that you're reciting quran uh, it's a tartitul quran in your free time and what are the key principles that you must be aware of so if you look at in terms of Tadrasul Quran or Tartilul Quran, first of all, we have a very well established culture within our contemporary Muslim communities. We have got madrasas for this purpose. However, the key focus here is on Tartil and Kirat. We uh, should not do speed reading when uh, do a Tartilul Quran because if you are reciting the Quran too quickly, you cannot ponder over and think about its meanings. So ideally, if you have got a Quran with translation if you're not uh, an arabic speaker and you do not understand quranic arabic that may help and also slow recitation is considered more respectful and it should lead to pondering and hushu which is the reverence towards allah uh, over what is being read the next uh, aspect is uh, tadabbur uh, quran where the key aim uh, is to uh, of the quran is to guide the humanity to become servants of allah to become obedient to Allah. So this requires an understanding the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important to appreciate and reflect on the key instructions and injunctions. It requires skills development in thinking, understanding, critical analysis, as well as uh, to know the motives and casualty of verses. Right now, so as we have learned what is Tadabur and how do we do Tadabur, we will do a couple of exercises in this area. So the first exercise is that you read the following verse in the Holy Quran. Now, explain sort of things you could reflect on uh, or you can do a tadabbar upon after reading this ayah. So the verse reads, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaki wa fi anfusihim. So we will show them our signs in the universe and within their own beings. Hatta yatabayyana lahum annahul haq. Until it becomes manifest to them that it is the truth. Is it not enough about your Lord 
that he is witness to everything. So a few things to note here, we will, so a future tense is used. So it's not at the time of the prophet or uh, 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 the previous times. The, it's a future tense which is used. So the Quran is not only the book for the past, but it is also the book for the humanity till it uh, lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the signs will be shown to us in the universe and within their own beings. Perhaps the signs which were not so visible to the human beings uh, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, but in the future, uh, new signs uh, will come to us uh, through our uh, knowledge and observations in the universe and through our observations within our own self, which will make it manifestly clear for those who have got doubts in their hearts that this Quran is the true message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this verse, uh, encourages us to think about Afaq, which means universe. So let's raise our head up in the sky and see what we could see up there. So, how many stars can you see in the Milky Way? Any idea how many stars are there in our Milky Way? By the way, Milky Way is considered a, sort of like a baby or a tiny galaxy. There are much, much bigger galaxies than the Milky Way. A big or a slightly average size galaxy could have up to two to three trillion stars. So the question is how many stars are there in the Milky Way? So the correct answer is about a billion stars are there in our tiny Milky Way. So if we have to write billion, uh, basically either we could write uh, one uh, billion as in word, but it, if you have to write it uh, in numbers, what you would do is you would write 1 million in numbers and you have to multiply it by 1000. So that's the number of stars in the Milky Way. So you can see here the galactic map of the observable universe and you can see our tiny Milky Way in this uh, big galactic map is no larger than a speck of a dust. So with, even with Milky, uh, 1 billion stars uh, in the large scale of things, we are no bigger than a speck of a dust. So the question is how many estimated number of observable galaxies are um, at the moment? So the answer to this question, what's the estimated number of observable galaxies uh, is, is about 100 billion and this number is estimated to rise to 200 billion once we get an upgrade to Hubble telescope because we are currently constrained by the limits of uh, our observation. So subhanallah look at the scale of the numbers. We begin reading Quran Majid with the first verse which is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. It's the Lord of the universe not Lord of the world, not Lord of the Milky Way, Lord of the universe. He is Al Awwal and He is Al Akhir. When there was nothing, He was there, and when there will be nothing, He will still be there. And just a brief reminder we use the word observable galaxies here. We can only observe from where we are receiving the light. We do not know yet what is on the diagrammatically opposite end of the universe, for instance. So we are constrained by our understanding and by our limitations. SubhanAllah. Right, so further in our reflection of the ayat, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq, uh, I would like to ask you one last question. What do you think is the current size of the observable universe in terms of light years? So just a reminder, light year is the amount of distance light travels in one year. So just an example, the sunlight reaches us in eight minutes from the sun. So literally in cosmic terms, sun and earth are literally next door neighbors, very, very close. So you can very well imagine one light year is a pretty huge distance. So the question here is, uh, based on our current knowledge and based on the observation we have done, what is the estimated size of the universe? And it is very important for us to recognize that this universe is not a static entity, 
it's a dynamic system which is working in a perfect order as has been brought to our attention in Surah Yasin where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالشَّمْسُ تَجْرِي لِمُسْتَقَرِّ لَهَا ذَلِكَ تَقْدِيرُ الْعَزِيزِ الْعَلِيمِ and the sun run on its fixed course for a time appointed. That is the decree of the Almighty. The Al Wal kamara kaddar nahu manazila hatta adakal urjun il kadim. And the moon, we have mired for its mansions to traverse till its return like the old droid curved dead stock. La shamsu yambagi laha antudrikal kamara wal laylu sabikun nahar. And it is not for the sun to overtake the moon, nor does the night outstrip the day. They all float, each in an orbit. So in the orbital motion uh, across the solar system and across the universe, as uh, described here, subhanAllah, there is a great deal of precision. So for instance, the Earth moves at a speed of about 108,000 kilometers per hour in its orbital motion around the sun. Now this is about maybe 550, 600 times faster than your fastest Porsche or a Ferrari, right? 108,000 kilometers per hour. Have you ever felt a bump or anything? SubhanAllah. Right, so we looked into Afaq and the next thing that this verse brought our attention to was Mafi Anfusihim. So just a reminder, the verse read, we will show them our signs in the universe and within our, their own beings until it becomes manifest to them that it is the truth. Now let's reflect on the signs which exist within our own self. So if I ask you a question, uh, what is uh, the estimate of number of cells in a human body and the estimated neurons in a human brain so if you could reflect on this so without any conscious effort on our part there are lots of different systems which work together to keep us active and alive if we talk about any system, for instance, the immune system, it is a very sophisticated knowledge based system which learns from previous experiences. And uh, so we have got what is called primary immune uh, response and then the adaptive immune response, which is ever learning to ensure that we are healthy and alive to perform very well. And then there are all sorts of cells, highly specialized cells. And our brain is uh, another marvel of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. It is so complex that many scientists joke that this brain will be the last discovery of the science. Well, cutting a long story short, there are signs of Al-Ahad or the single creator everywhere we see. Now in Surah Yasin verse 77, our attention has been brought to the humble origin of man. Quran says, has not man seen that we have created him from a drop of seed? Yet lo, he is an open opponent. So all of us started our journey as a very humble single cell. And through will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we, we are created. And once man grows up, he questions and he says, I do not see any sign of the God. Like there is a prevalent attitude of the atheists and agnostics who believe that everything happens because of nothing. So there is no God at all. So Quran Karim asks them and bring their uh, attention to their own humble origin. And this itself provides them with sufficient evidence to pre believe in one Al-Ahad one Allah who is created not only of themselves, not only of the beautiful world around it, but the entire universe. Now in this exercise, I will 
uh, encourage you to reflect on these verses of Holy Quran and see how uh, these verses are encouraging us to do tadabur. So these verses from Surah At-Tur are a response to the uh, viewpoints of the atheists, right? So these atheists are, uh, uh, are uh, antagonists or whatever definition uh, you call them by, they have a belief that there is no creator. Right, this world, this universe, uh, everything is a result of a cosmic accident, which took place, which they call a um, uh, big bang uh, explosion, and uh, they are of the view that it's all systems are running without a creator. So see the beautiful manner in which Quran cream uh, responds to uh, uh, their uh, ludicrous uh, propositions and completely uh, and in a very rational manner uh, knocks the foundation of their argument. So Quran says Am khuliku min qayri shay'in am humul khalikun or were they created by nothing or were they creators of themselves? So they have this ludicrous proposition that well um, uh, everything came out of nothing. So Quran is asking so what about themselves uh, who created them? Am khalaku samawati wal ard bal la yukinun or did they create heavens and the earth? Rather, they are not certain. Now, if we uh, test the hypothesis of uh, atheists that there is uh, no God, uh, basically, there can be only three possibilities as highlighted in uh, this verse. Either you were created by nothing, or you were self-created, or you were created by an external cause. Now let's examine uh, this by putting uh, these ludicrous uh, hypotheses of uh, atheists uh, on test using a very simple example. Right, so let's put the three point test that we obtained uh, from the previous verse onto this uh, very simple example. So the atheists uh, are of the view that everything in this uh, universe has got no creator. There is no creator at all. So that's their uh, hypothesis. Now let's take this simple drawing drawn by a kid for an example right don't talk about the universe or the complex things um, so if we put this is it possible that this drawing could potentially be created by no one because all the designs reflect intelligence and uh, our rational thinking and logical thinking tells us that um, there is always a designer or a creator be behind anything which has a design element so if an atheist comes and he tries uh, to convince you that this drawing has no designer based on your um, uh, empirical observations um, would you believe this thing or not now we have certain common sense and we have got certain logic uh, we can see that this drawing is very intricate there is a very uh, nice color patterns it's impossible that this drawing could be created uh, by it uh, without a designer so this drawing must have a, a designer so this we will refute uh, this is an, not a possibility the next thing uh, which these atheists argue is that everything comes out of a self-generating process. So if an atheist comes in and says, well, no, there is no designer at all of this drawing and it was just a self-generated process. We put some pen and paper in a box and then just rub them and um, as a result of this, this drawing was created. Again, uh, we can see that there are very intricate uh, uh, drawings and it is not possible. And if uh, they want, they could do a similar test and they could prove that they could draw a, a similar drawing. So again, one can very easily refute this hypothesis as nonsense, which leads to only uh, one option that there is a designer, right? So based on the uh, logic derived from the previous verse, we can easily uh, refute uh, any atheist's uh, uh, way of thinking, even they're not applicable. Now, see how uh, Quran uh, refutes the basis uh, out of this whole argument of atheism. So the atheism has the view that this beautiful world and the universe result of a cosmic accident without a creator. So the Quran questions uh, them, Am khulikum in ghayra shayin, were they created out of nothing, right? Now our simple logic, our observations tells that even a kid's drawing cannot emerge out of uh, nothing 
everything which is uh, intelligent which is designed it always has a creator right so is this uh, a valid hypothesis which they are making based on our uh, observations so any thinking person could uh, very clearly say that this hypothesis is uh, uh, completely uh, not true and it's a false statement next they make a statement that well humans self-evolved as a result of a pure random physical processes so this uh, there is no god no creator and it's just basically it goes on by its own self so quran is asking them um, um, so are you running this process who is managing in, in this uh, process um, uh, are these atheists managing this uh, evolution uh, process allah has created every single thing uh, on this planet from a single atom to a cell to a dna everything gives you enough signs of the creator but uh, uh, what have these atheists created other than just uh, believing in nothing they have not created anything so uh, the verse tells us balla yakinun they believe in nothing and if you see the definition of atheism it is the belief that there was nothing and nothing happened to nothing and then nothing magically exploded for no reason creating everything and then a bunch of everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever into self-replicating bits which then turned into dinosaurs and then to human being so any rational person any thinking person could understand how ludicrous this whole idea is and this is the biggest lie of uh, the century which they are telling time and again so they keep telling a lie so that uh, a falsehood becomes the truth and all the education system and all the uh, science curricula and uh, uh, in fact all the societies are based on atheism on the denial of the creator whereas the logic clearly tells us that there are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere we see as uh, it is mentioned in Surah Rahman which translates as which 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 favors of your Lord would you uh, 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 deny so unlike all the false statements made by uh, atheists there are signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single ancient corner of the universe take uh, example of an atom for instance or a cell or a DNA you will find evidence of a single creator now talking about a DNA for instance if we compare DNA of a man with a fruit for instance a banana you will see almost 50% of our genetic code is the same and it's because we have the same creator who has created every single thing not only on this uh, planet earth but across the universe so they are very clear and similar design patterns so if there were multiple creators there was more than one creator there would have been multiple realities which is not the case so this uh, Fibonacci sequence where there is um, which is obtained uh, through uh, uh, the mathematically doubling everything so it's basically shape of a curve where you take a square and you double it and then uh, you double it again so two at three is five and uh, and then five so it's this sort of a, a design pattern which emerged because of this sequence and we see similar sort of a design pattern repeated time and again uh, in Allah's creation within our footprints and in the flowers and in the design of the galaxies and the uh, uh, in the design of a snail and natural systems so every um, uh, uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, brings us uh, uh, um, uh, closer to Allah and gives us the uh, proof of uh, his existence and his beautiful uh, creation so coming back to the main point uh, which we were discussing previously without the double or without reflection uh, we may not be able to uh, seek guidance and advice so a summary of uh, the key points that we reviewed in this session which is the importance of thinking and analysis contemplation on the meanings of the Quran examination of key points a deeper inspection of the uh, uh, meaning observations taking lessons intellectual analysis some of the points that we have been encouraged to 
uh, do uh, in the Quran. Now, following this, I think it will be useful for us to keep maybe uh, maintain our own journal or a diary where we could take notes. So not only the focus is on reading the Quran, but also understanding its uh, meanings. So, if we take sort of like this virtual journal, uh, and I you can perhaps uh, record whatever uh, your thoughts are, whatever your reflections are from this session before we move on to our next session. Okay, thank you very much.